and relax the body. And relax the sense of ownership of the body. The sense of attachment or identification to or with the body. It's like you're giving every layer of your assumed self back to God. Disown everything. Take a deep breath. Whatever mental tension you notice, you just relax it, you give it away. Bye-bye. If you can feel it, if you can notice it, it's not you. So relax it, give it away. If you can feel, sense, see, think, or know it, it is not you, the knower, the feeler, the sensor, the thinker, the one who perceives all it. Therefore, relax, give it away. When we relax our focus on perceptions, we create space for our true self to shine forth as if from the background of our being. When we are too clingy, too occupied, there isn't enough space for the true self to reveal itself. We'll cover it up with thoughts and feelings and opinions. But there is a, so to speak, background of light, background of awareness, enabling your perception of anything to begin with. It's like the motherboard is able to run all the programs that you then interact with. It is the root, the substratum, the essence, the isness, the light which enables perception, the beingness which enables consciousness. All of your perceptions and experiences can be traced back can be let back to this background of you, that which you are all the time, usually without noticing it. But take an experience, for example, where you are completely inundated with perceptions. You're hectic, you're anxious, you're busy, Maybe there's a deadline you need to make. And you're going on all cylinders. There is no awareness of this background of I am. Memorize an experience such as this. And maybe it was just before you entered this room. For most people, it's all the time. Pretty much, unless they're in deep sleep. So take this hectic experience where there is no awareness of awareness, where there is no recognition of your existence itself. There's only absorption in sense perceptions and in thought forms at the total eclipse or expense of awareness, beingness, bliss, isness, I am. Picture such a moment of total doubt, confusion, ignorance, delusion, projection, imagination, mind. 
remember it, imagine it, as if you're watching a movie of yourself, of your past self, in front of your own eyes. See the hecticness. See the anxiety. See the lack beliefs that drive the engine behind this anxiety, this delusion, this forgetfulness. The neediness, the lack that you must believe in in order to cause such chaos to your system all the time and tolerate it. You must be chasing some kind of redemption, some kind of relief, some kind of clarity. Perhaps it is to be loved. Perhaps it is to be appreciated. Perhaps it is to establish security, well-being, peace of mind. Perhaps it even is your search for enlightenment or liberation from all this mental garbage. Whatever the lack believe may be, see how it fuels this chaos of the personal mind completely identified with the body and its own perceptions of the world for it to run around incessantly without fail without consciousness without pause for reflection trying desperately to chase to find to establish some sense of security some sense of confirmation in this projected world of sense objects and thought forms and just witness yourself lovingly witness how your system is freaking out and you're not even pausing it because you're used to it this is called everyday life this is called city living Because everyone else does it, there is no contrast. You think you're normal. Most people are only one step away from having a fuse burned out in their brain. Because you're in sixth gear, foot to the floor all the time. And you don't even know why. You just know that it hurts when you pause for too long to observe it. So you keep yourself occupied with more stuff and more dreams and more goals. The more lack beliefs needing to be fulfilled by accumulating more projections of sense objects and thought forms. And again, just lovingly, patiently witness your mind, rule your body, your world, your relationships. And now notice the one who's watching is actually peaceful. The background of awareness from which you perceive this hectic realm of mind is actually stable, changeless, at ease, unmovable. This is your ground of I am. This is the ground of being. This is the one to whom I speak. paradox about being a spiritual teacher is that you speak to the truth in people but in order to do so you have to reach through the filter of the mind you have to use words in such a way that the mind is able to turn back onto the background of being onto the truth of its I am awareness isness 
and eventually upon merging with it a little bit more bliss love light radiance luminosity freedom liberation joy happiness stability the master in you the guru in you is unflinching unwavering doesn't budge doesn't ever take anything to be itself that it is not it is always in a state of loving discernment it naturally knows and sees that the appearances projected onto the screen of consciousness have literally zero to do with who it is what it is nothing that moves nothing that changes nothing that has form nothing that can be detected by any ordinary means can ever be the master in you can never be the truth of what you are the truth knows that your mind does not this journey is from mind to master Master is undistracted at all times. It knows itself with a brightness, with a fire, with a vividness at all times. This master is in you now. It already knows itself all the time. It's because you are identified with the mind that you're not enjoying the heavens of the master in you because you give meaning, importance, significance, credit, value to these things that have no meaning, significance, credit, or value. Your entire life and all the confusion and anxiety that comes along with what you call your life, which you would like to protect in most cases. Not everyone desires complete absorption. Not everyone desires to be the master. Many people desire to tweak their anxiety to make it a little less anxious and a little more joyful every day a little bit more and there's nothing wrong with that it's a perfectly fine path to take so whatever is relevant whatever feels most exciting has some value to you if you ascribe value to it and so I'm not here to question that but even if you are ascribing value and meaning to a inherently meaningless and doomed life and you really want to hold on to it and make something out of it. Make it work, make it last a little longer, make sure you eat healthy and get those additional two years in, two years of anxiety gained, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, even if that is your choice, to whatever degree you want to dissolve the illusion of a separate life, and fall into the, the grace, the beauty, the divinity, the love, light, bliss that's available upon merging with the background of your beingness, which is always here, the master, the one who is undistracted. Over time, more and more of that will become who you are with practice, with experience, with seeing through the folly of trying to live a separate life because really an independent life is a life apart from intelligence. That's what we strive for in our society. How far can I get away from the motherboard that makes this whole show run and that knows all the elements of the software, all the elements of this computer, of this game? Let me try to get as far away from the whole of infinite intelligence as I can and call that accomplishment. So you will see through the folly of that. You will surrender. You will admit defeat inevitably. Maybe not in this life, but inevitably. You cannot be separate. You cannot be apart from this intelligence. So why try so hard? Why waste this energy? You can still enjoy the fruits of individuality. 
but maintain a strong, firm connection to the motherboard, the background of intelligence. And that's what I'm here to share, to give you an experience, hopefully, of that which you are before the filters, the glasses of your mind, so that you can develop this on your own and rest as awareness, as I am, as beingness, more and more throughout the day and gain this mastery and this stability. And it has paradoxically all the perks that you seek from accumulating an independent life outside yourself using the means of sense objects and thought forms. But you believe it's real and it's out there and there's something for you to gain that you are lacking, fundamentally missing. When we admit this, suddenly the infinite intelligence starts to communicate with this part, with this expression. And so what happens is what I call crystallization. The individual expression starts to cr crystallize its unique expression, its unique design, why it is here. Much faster than when you're trying to do it all apart from intelligence.